All right, so here's another momentum impulse problem in which a 165 gram cue ball is initially sitting at rest and then the pull stick hits it dead center and provides an impulse of 1.5 newton seconds to the cue ball, which then moves on a frictionless pool table towards another ball and th another collision happens in which that ball, the cue ball, hits the eight ball dead center. The eight ball is initially at rest, and then the two balls, or one of them, is moving. And what we really want to find, if we're asked about the velocity of that second ball, which I'm calling the eight ball. So the situation is as follows. There are um, quote unquote, there are two collisions basically, right? There's this one collision of stick with the ball in which there's an external force that provides an impulse to the ball and that impulse changes the momentum of the cue ball from initially zero because it's at rest to some value. And then that ball travels with that velocity towards another ball, that another collision happens and that collision results in an exchange of momentum and what we want to calculate is the velocity of that eight ball after that collision and that second collision we are told is an elastic head-on collision so this is collision two is elastic head-on collision and of course head-on here the the hint is that it's going to be along the same dimension so i don't have to solve this is not a two-dimensional problem this is a, a single dimension problem everything happens along a, one line so i only have to analyze things in a single dimension so this is the second collision and this is the first collision okay so how do i start well Let's start from the first collision. Let's figure out what happens there. A stick hits a ball, transfers, gives it some impulse, and I know by the momentum impulse theorem that the impulse of external forces is going to change the momentum. So I have a cue ball, and there's a force applied to it that's an external force to that system, and that is going to change the momentum of the cue ball. I know the momentum is mass times velocity. So if initially the cue ball is at rest, that means that the initial momentum, the mass times the initial velocity is equal to zero. So then that means that the external, the impulse of external force is now going to be equal to the final momentum. So let's write that down. I know that the impulse of external forces is going to be equal to a change in momentum which is the momentum final minus the momentum initial. I know that in this case, this is zero. So that means then that the final momentum after the first collision of the cue ball is going to be equal to the applied impulse by the stick. So it's going to be equal to 1.5 newton seconds but i also know that this is equal to a mass times velocity which i'm going to call v final because it's the final velocity after that first collision and if i'm given the mass then i can calculate that velocity which is going to be momentum divided by mass so that's 1.5 Newton seconds divided by 0.165 kilograms. So that's going to be roughly 10, but if you work it out, it comes to 9.1 meters per second. So that's the first collision. The second collision then happens in which the system now 
I'm thinking about the cue ball and the eight ball being a system. And the cue ball hits the eight ball, which is initially at rest. And then these two have final velocities that we don't know. So I'm going to label these velocities as V0 because now this is the initial velocity before the second collision. I haven't used that symbol before, so I'm just going to use it here. And I'm going to call this the velocity 1 of the cue ball. And this is the velocity of the 8 ball. I'm going to call it V2. And in the question, we want to find V2. OK, so I know the initial momentum because I know it's um, in fact, the final momentum from the first collision. So I know what that is. And I didn't lose anything. There were no external forces from this point to this point acting on the cue ball. So that's why its momentum did not change. So in fact, what I'm calling V final here is exactly V naught here. Okay, so for the second collision, between the cue ball and the eight ball. The initial total momentum is going to be the mass of the first ball times its velocity plus the mass of the second ball times its velocity, which is zero. The two masses are actually, in fact, the same. So from now on, I'm just going to keep the subscript only so that you realize which one I'm talking about. But in fact, these two are equal to the mass of the ball, are equal to m. So then the initial momentum is only the mass of the ball multiplied by v naught, And I know that v naught is the same as v final. So in fact, this is the same as this momentum. I'm just breaking things down, but I, I knew from before that it's the same momentum because there were no external forces acting in between these two steps. So I know it's the same momentum, but I'm just breaking things down for pedagogical reasons. So that's the initial momentum. And the final momentum of the system that contains the cue ball and the eight ball. So I'm adding the momenta from both balls is going to be equal to the mass of the first times its velocity, because that's what the momentum is, plus the mass of the second times its velocity. And I've actually assumed implicitly here that they are going in the same direction by using a, a plus sign for both. I'm assuming that they're going in the same direction. And if, in fact, then it turns out that one of them turns out to be negative, then I know that it's going to be in the opposite direction. Okay, so I've assumed that this is the positive direction. Okay, then. Um, now I have no external forces are acting during this second collision. So in fact, the change in momentum is going to be equal to the impulse of external forces equal to zero. So in fact, during this collision, the momentum of the total system, which is the two balls, is going to be conserved. So in fact, this initial momentum is going to be equal to this final momentum. OK? So during the second collision, because there were no external forces on the two ball system, then momentum of the system is conserved. That is to say that there is no change in momentum. So the final momentum is going to be equal to the initial momentum. I know what the initial momentum is. I know what the masses are of the two balls. So what I'm really missing are the velocities. So let's write that statement. That statement says that the 
mass of the cue ball multiplied by its initial velocity is equal to the mass of the cue ball multiplied by its final velocity plus the mass of the eight ball multiplied by its velocity. And we'll see then that the mass cancels out. And I know that this initial velocity is the same as the final velocity of the first collision. So I know then that V1 plus V2 is equal to 9.1 meters per second. And that's equation one. I can't figure out which um, I can't figure out exactly the values of these two velocities, but what I also know is that this is an elastic collision. And because it's an elastic collision, then I know that the kinetic energy before and after the collision for the total system is going to be conserved. So elastic collision, I think I wrote that here on the back here. If, for, for any collision, if there's no external force, momentum is conserved. We've applied that. And I also know that in elastic collisions, the kinetic energy of the total system is conserved. That is to say that the kinetic energy before the collision is equal to the kinetic energy after the collision. So here's the kinetic energy. I know that it's equal to half mv squared, and it has units of newton meters or joules. The total kinetic energy before the collision is going to be equal to the total kinetic energy after collision. So before the collision, the total kinetic energy was half the mass of the cue ball times the velocity of the cue ball squared. And that's going to be equal to, well, that's the only term because the eight ball was at rest. So its kinetic energy was zero because it has no velocity. And then after, I have to add up the two terms, the mass of the cue ball multiplied by its velocity squared plus half the mass of the eight ball multiplied by its velocity squared. And I see then that half m crosses with half m crosses with half m and v naught squared. V naught of course is the 9.1 meters per second which was the v final of the first collision. So then I know from this that v1 squared plus v2 squared is equal to v0 squared, which is 9.1 squared. OK, so I have two equations then. Equation 1 says v1 plus v2 is equal to 9.1. Equation 2 says v1 squared plus v2 squared is equal to 9.1 squared. OK. So to try to solve these two equations together, what I'm going to look at is if I, because this is 9.1 squared, and this is 9.1, which in fact was v naught, and this is v naught squared, then if I square this equation, I get v naught squared is equal to v1 plus v2 all squared. And here v naught squared is equal to v1 squared plus v2 squared. So v naught squared is equal to, from this equation, the top one, v1 plus v2 all squared. And from this equation two, I know that v naught squared is equal to v1 squared plus v2 squared. 
So if I subtract these two equations from each other, I get that v1 plus v2 all squared minus v1 squared plus v2 squared is equal to 0. If I then expand this square, I find that v1 squared plus v2 squared plus 2 v1 v2 oops not squared v1 v2 minus v1 squared minus v2 squared is equal to 0 but these cancel out and these cancel out so I'm left with 2 v1 v2 is equal to 0 which says that either v1 is equal to 0 or v2 equal to 0. And if I'm multiplying two numbers by each other and it's equal to 0 then one of them has to be 0. Which one makes more sense? Does it make more sense that v1 is equal to 0 or that v2 is equal to 0? In other words, if the cue ball hits the 8 ball, does it make sense that the 8 ball is still stationary after the collision? Or does it make more sense that now the cue ball is the one that is stationary after the collision? I think that's the right answer. That this makes sense. Not this one. So if V1 is equal to 0, then from equation 1, I can figure out that V2, if this is 0, then V2 is equal to positive 9.1 meters per second. So in fact, what happened then is that when the stick hit the cue ball, it gave it some velocity that went unhindered all the way until it hit the other ball. Now the, sec the cue ball now stopped and the eight ball took all of its momentum and moved away with the same velocity that the cue ball was traveling with before the second collision. 